Hello and welcome again. My name is CJ and I am here to talk to you about Sliders. And this is the Sliders Review. Sliders was a very great show. I like to call this show a beautiful tragedy. This show had beautiful writing, an amazing cast, great plot summaries, and a nice overall premise. It's a tragedy, however, because of what happened to a lot of the main cast members. And of course, what happened towards the end of the season, which was just a huge mess. But today, in my eighth video, I'm here to talk to you about the first season. Now, you can purchase the first season online on DVD. And it's pretty cheap now since it's been out for so many years. first season came out in 1995 on a network called Fox. The best place to probably go to get this DVD is probably buy.com. It's the main site in which I always use to buy my DVDs. They're really cheap and low price and they have amazing sales. I got Flyer Season 3 for only 10 bucks. And if you can catch a really good sale, you can get anywhere between five to eight bucks. The next best place to get a slider DVD is Walmart. Walmart is pretty cheap when it comes to overall all stores. And just like buy.com, they have great sales. So you have to keep checking weekly to see if the sales have changed or not. Third best place that I know about my DVDs is FYE. FYE has some pretty good sales once in a while. They're kind of pricey at times. They're just like buy.com. You can buy new DVDs or used DVDs. Personally, I'll get like a brand new DVD because you don't want an old DVD that might be scratched up or skipping or something. But for the most part, it's a pretty good range of price, but it does get a little pricey when it comes to FYE. The fourth place I normally buy my DVDs are Best Buy. But I really don't go to Best Buy no more or even go on that site because Best Buy is in a very, very expensive place. Another site that you can also buy sliders from is Amazon.com. I personally have never bought anything from Amazon.com and had a bad experience. When it came to sliders, I tried to get the combo pack for season 3 and 4, and they say they was in stock. So I ordered my DD and it never came. And so many weeks passed by up to a month, and I didn't know what was the hold up. To find out, it was actually out of stock, but they didn't tell nobody. So, you know, you can buy from there or not, it really doesn't matter, but... They are pretty pricey, and the only time you're going to find a really cheap DVD there is if it's a used DVD, or if it's like Black Friday or something, or Cyber Monday. Okay, so let's get started with Sliders, first season on DVD. Now, the DVD looks like this, and it's a combo pack that has both season 1 and season 2. The reason behind this is because season 1 only consisted of 9 episodes, but now, I just found out, after searching the web, that... Universal has separated Season 1 and Season 2 in individual DVD packages. And they're more streamlined, they're not a big bulky box no more. Which is kind of cool because, you know, each new DVD has a brand new cover to it. And being like the huge Slider fan that I am, I just want to go and just rebuy this entire season just to get a new DVD cover. But I won't unless they have new bonus features. In Season 1 of Sliders, this is probably the best season when it comes to how a real life person would react to sliding a different dimension. And what makes it so believable is the cast reactions to it, especially Remy. Remy is probably the most understandable character in the whole first season, and many people can relate to his experiences because they would probably do the same as that thing that he does. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Season 1 was just straight up comedy. It was by far the funniest season of all five seasons. Rembrandt gave some of the best performances when it came to comedy, him and the professor. And that's what pretty much the first season was kind of about in the premise of this show. Now this show, like I said before, was on Fox. And it was created by Tracy Torme and Robert K. Weiss. And their premise of the show was supposed to be kind of like a dark comedy sci-fi type show that involves what would happen if history events happen differently and the future outcome would change. In one parallel dimension, women were the driving force of the world instead of men. In another world, the British ruled all of America and they lived monarchy. And in one of my favorite episodes, Fever, that was a world in which antibiotics were never invented. Therefore, all kinds of diseases and plagues were allowed to spread throughout the world, killing people. And on that world, the government officials, if you had like a single cough or a runny nose, you would pretty much get arrested in quarantine and have all your rights taken away. There's even a world in which the 
United States were controlled by the Russians. Also, in the first season, we would see at the end of each episode, the sliders would slide to a parallel Earth. And then we'll see either some kind of danger happen. In the next episode, it will pick up right after that episode ended. And we'll see them in the same clothes and what kind of catastrophe that was happening to them. Also, the order in which the episodes are all messed up in the first season. And this is due to Fox. Now, the original order on which the episodes were supposed to air, I will list below in the description box. But Fox decided, well, we're going to air the shows at random in the order in which we want to show them. So, a lot of episodes didn't make sense because after the episode would end and we see them on one Earth, the next episode would start and we'll see them in completely different clothes and then that episode will end and then the next episode that starts up will show them in the same clothes as the past two episodes. And this became very confusing for fans. And Fox never ever wanted to correct this error. In fact, this error is on the DVD also. The most recurring theme of all is the hotel, the Dominion Hotel. It's the hotel in which the sliders are always occupying and the hotel is run by a man by the name of Calzone and he appears mostly in the first and the second season but he also appears in the fourth season but by that time in the fourth season they don't get the same guy who plays him they get a different guy and they try to say oh it's his double well you know if it's his double why don't they look alike that's just retarded in my opinion but that could be only because of the change of location and the guy who plays Calzone went on to play um, in Mad TV. Another recurring character we see is Convoy Benish. He's a friend of Quinn's and he's also a student of the professors. And Benish is pretty much a happy-go-lucky stoner type dude who's also a genius. And he knows a lot about the string theory in Parallel Dimensions. Another little recurring character we see throughout the first and second season is the taxi cab driver. A Russian guy who lives in America who's always driving the sliders around. But after the second season, we never see none of these recurring characters again, and we really don't see the Dominion Hotel anymore. Maybe it's up for like one time. In the first season, we see a group of four people. The first person of this group, and most important, is Quinn Mallory. He is the person who invented sliders. Throughout the course of the first season, we start to see that his personality starts to change a little bit. He turns from this goofy, nerdy, lovable guy into kind of a jock. And sliding gives him the ability now to build more self-confidence. He, for the most part, he's not really upset about sliding. He's upset at the fact that he can't get back home. But he's happy in the sense that this is a thing that he created and now he gets to explore the multiverse and just have a bunch of fun. And it's also allows him to play hero because on many of these worlds they're corrupt. Now, on to the professor. Professor Maximilian Arturo and he teaches at the university in which Quinn goes to. The professor teaches cosmology and ontology. He doesn't know much about sliding technology but he knows a lot about string theory and parallel dimensions and in which the courses he teaches. Now when it comes to the professor, he has a high level of eloquence, very bridge and very poised and very classic in a way. And for the most part, he is the hero of the first three seasons. And I say this because even though the professor wasn't smart enough to invent sliding and don't know much about sliding technology, he knows a great deal about other stuff. And it is, in fact, he is the one that saves pretty much every world they visit in the first three seasons. Whereas Quinn doesn't, because Quinn is always either being captured or doing something else. Now, one huge thing the professor is always stating to all the sliders is, we should slide the parallel earth, but we should never ever interfere in their lives. Now, Rembrandt, the crying man Brown, also known as Remy, he was just a former singer from like the 70s or 80s trying to make a comeback. Now Rembrandt, like I said before, is probably the most relatable character. He's very funny, he loves to have a good time, but Rembrandt is very selfish. He's sometimes greedy and he always plays the guilt trip on Quinn because he blames Quinn for what happened. Now when I say Rembrandt, it's kind of selfish. I mean, when we see him slide in the first season, 
Every time they slide to a different world, they're always in danger. But Rembrandt is always off on his own doing his own thing. He's always out having some sexual liaison with some strange woman, or he's out partying with people. And this is happening constantly throughout the first season. Through the course of the series, you start to see a change in his character development. He goes from being this fun-loving, selfish person to a person who the team can really rely on, and they can trust with their lives. He's the type of person that won't turn his back on his friend, and he'll help them out no matter what. Now, the last person I'm going to talk about is Wade Wells. She is the average American girl next door. She's a very beautiful and very lovely woman. She's a bit of a tomboy. She has a huge heart for her friends. She's the hopeful romantic type. And she's just very spunky and very happy and joyful. But she also has a huge crush on Quinn. So we constantly see this kind of will they, won't they kind of relationship. Now, Wade, she is not a scientist. She has a bit of curiosity when it comes to witchcraft, but for the most part, because she is not a scientist like Rembrandt, she really doesn't help the team out much, especially when it comes to saving the world. But the thing about Wade that I love, she's very highly opinionated, and even though she's not a scientist, she will give her opinions on how to better people's lives when she goes to other different worlds. In the last episode of Season 1, entitled Luck of the Draw, Wade has just won the lottery. So she's living up left and right, which kind of makes Quinn a little bit jealous that he fears that she wants to stay on this world. Also, he gets a little bit more jealous that she is starting to have a romantic feeling for this other lottery winner. And we start to see that the lottery is pretty much your death. On that world, there are so many people and lack of human resources that when you win the lottery, you pretty much fill out your will and it goes to your family after you die. And you voluntarily kill yourself and commit suicide. And so, of course, the sliders are trying to prevent Wade from dying. And also they're trying to prevent Rembrandt from dying because he ends up falling in love with one of the lottery winners. And he said he wants to be with her. So she takes this as he wants to die with her. So... When he refuses to kill himself and refuses to let her die, the lottery police arrest him. And then they're going to kill him later on. So Quinn the professor rescue Rembrandt. As this is happening, she convinces one of the lottery winners to slide with them. So as they're running from the lottery police, the big climax cliffhanger of the season finale happens in which they all make the slide, but as Quinn is about to slide, he is shot in the back. And when they get onto the other world, they're all happy and excited until they find out Quinn passes out. And then we see Wade hold Quinn in her arms with blood in her hands, and she lets out this really, like, horrific scream. And then the episode ends. And there you go, folks. This is the rundown of Sliders the first season. In my next episode, I will talk about the second season. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye.